Hello, welcome to the Mark Janard Show, the cybersecurity show. Let's talk about Kali Linux and Pendrive. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We're going dark. So to use Kali Linux from a pen drive, right? The USB drive, follow these steps precisely, right? You're gonna wanna create a bootable Kali USB drive on Windows, right? Download the Kali Linux ISO, go to the official Kali Linux website and download the latest ISO image for your system architecture, whether it's 32-bit or 64-bit, right? Number two, prepare the USB drive. Use a USB drive with at least eight gigabytes of free space. Choose a tool, right? Uh, you can have Etcher, uh, you know, again, download and install Etcher, uh, launch Etcher and select the Kali Linux ISO file. Choose the USB drive as the target, right? Then click flash to start the process. Then you have Rufus, Rufus, whatever you want to call it, R-U-F-U-S. Uh, download and install Rufus, Rufus, whatever you want to call it. Launch Rufus and select the USB drive. S choose the Kali Linux ISO file. Set the partition scheme and target system if needed. Click start to begin the process. Creating a bootable Kali Linux or, or creating a bootable Kali USB drive on Linux, right? So let's start that process. But before we do that, please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and the like button. Hit that subscribe button and the like button right now. Okay, so download the Kali Linux uh, ISO. Go to the official Kali Linux I, uh, website and download the latest ISO image for your system architecture, right? 32-bit or 64-bit. Prepare the USB drive. Use a USB drive with at least four gigabytes of free space. Use the DD command, like dog dog DD command. Uh, identify the device path of the USB drive. And Peter, please put the commands on the screen so that people can see it. Uh, use the DD command to copy the ISO image to the flash drive bash and Peter you could put that on the screen for the users so they can see uh, Visually right and then there's alternative methods, right? You can use DD with a status indicator bash and Peter You can also put that on the screen for the users right there so that they they understand what's going on right here Right you guys you got you got you guys see it you guys see it, right? So use PV right PV Peter vector use PV for a progress indicator bash. Okay, Peter, put that back on the screen for them so that they can see it, right? Put that on the screen for them, Peter. All right. So now let's talk about booting from the USB drive. You're going to want to insert the USB drive, plug in the USB drive into a USB port on your system, restart and enter boot menu, restart your system, press the appropriate key to enter the boot menu, usually F11 or F12, select the USB drive as the boot device, boot into Kali Linux, right? Kali Linux will now boot from the USB drive, okay? Now, enabling persistence is another aspect of this, right? So to enable persistence, you can use tools like Rufus on Windows or the DD command on Linux. This allows changes made to the system to be saved across reboots, okay? What are the steps to add persistence you know, to a Kali Linux USB drive? To add persistence to a Kali Linux USB drive, follow these steps precisely, right? Creating a bootable Kali USB drive with persistence. You're gonna wanna download uh, the Kali Linux ISO, go to the official Kali Linux website and download the latest ISO image for your system architecture, 32-bit or 64-bit. I'm giving you guys these methods. Now this one is with persistence, right? Prepare the USB drive, use a USB drive with at least eight gigabytes of free space, okay? There are minute details that you have to pay attention to. Now, choose a tool. Rufus, right? You can download and install Rufus, launch Rufus and select the USB drive. You can choose the Kali Linux ISO file. You can set the partition scheme and target system if needed. You can enable persistence by setting a persistent partition size, right? Example, four gigabytes. Click start to begin the process. Now, booting into uh, Kali Linux with persistence. So insert the USB drive into your system and boot from it. Select the Kali Linux live with USB persistence option from the boot menu, right? Kali Linux will now boot with persistence, allowing you to save changes across reboots. Okay, that's very important. Now, enabling persistence on an existing Kali Linux USB drive. I'm just giving you guys the, 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 these things to just keep following, right? So. 
Number one, boot into Kali Linux Live USB, insert the USB drive into your system and boot from it. Select the Kali Linux Live option from the boot menu. Create a persistence partition, right? You're gonna wanna open a terminal and run the following commands. And Peter, you can put that on the screen for the users, right? Put that on the screen for them right there. That bash, right? Put, put that, so, so the viewers can see it right there, okay? So this will create a new partition on the USB drive for persistence. You know, now with, let's talk about formatting, right? Format the persistence partition. Create an e, um, EXT, right? X for file system on the new partition. And you can do that. Peter, you can put that on the screen for the users right there, that code. Now, in regards to enabling per persistence, right? Mount the, persis uh, the persistence partition and create the configuration file. And Peter, you could put that, that, that pseudo file on, on the screen for them, that that text so that they can see it. Yeah, you guys see it. You see, I'm, I'm giving you guys examples, some visuals. We're not ducking this smoke, right? <laughs> and then you can uh, reboot into Kali Linux with persistence, right? Reboot your system and select the Kali Linux Live with USB persistence option from the boot menu. Kali Linux will now boot with persistence, allowing you to save changes across reboots. Uh, so, by following those steps, right, you can create a Kali Linux USB drive with persistence or enable persistence on an existing Kali USB drive. This allows you to save your work configurations and installed tools across reboots, making Kali Linux more portable and convenient to use, right? So are there any specific hardware requirements for encrypted persistence so there are a few hardware requirements to consider when using encrypted persistence with kali linux usb uh drive right you have the tpm chip so if you want to uh if you want to persist the encryption keys across reboots the xi right esxi host needs to have a you know a tpm which is a trusted platform module chip the encryption keys are stored in the tpm allowing the host uh to continue using encrypted uh, virtual machines even when the key server Server is unavailable then you have USB drive size it's recommended to use a USB drive with at least 8 gigabytes of free space for creating a bootable Kali Linux USB with persistence however for full advantage of persistence a 64, a 64 uh, gigabyte USB drive is recommended now Compatibility with Apple hardware, uh, a USB flash drive configured to support live persistence will not work with Apple hardware, probably due to their specific BIOS, right? The Kali Linux documentation specifically warns about this incompatibility. Now, finally, partition structure, the USB drive needs to have at least three partitions for the Kali Linux live system, boot files, and the encrypted persistent partition. The encrypted partition is typically created in the empty space above the Kali partitions. So in summary, right? While a TPM chip is not strictly required, it provides an extra layer of security by persisting the encryption keys across the reboots, right? The USB drive size should be at least eight gigabytes with 64 gigabytes recommended for full persistence and compatibility issues may arise with Apple hardware. That's what I have for you today. Please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and like button. Please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and like button. I appreciate your viewership. Stay safe, see you in the next video.